welcome home and welcome to a uh, a bonus lifestyle video i guess today we're gonna be doing some new year's resolution things i'm also gonna be fixing my camera so we're gonna be talking about what happened in 2023 what i want to do in 2024 we're just gonna make a little resolution kind of work through what's gonna be happening in the next couple of months and then i don't know if you guys want to follow along and fill out your own thing do it Great. All right, so I'm doing this all on Notion. It's just a little kind of database app. There's a free plan that I use. It's great because I'm poor. Um, it's how I keep track of a whole bunch of things like my classes that I'm in and things that I have to do in the next week and how I keep track of my resolutions, which I only started doing last year. I have never been one for New Year's resolutions because I just didn't care. So. Um, we're starting out with our 2023 review page. I have two columns here, things that I did well and things that I didn't do as well. So first I'm going to look at what my, <laughs> what my resolutions were in general. I have like this section on health. I'm going to be honest, I haven't looked at this probably since I made it last December, which means I probably didn't follow it very well. So I wanted to eat healthy meals, fruit and vegetables with every meal. I wanted to exercise, I wanted to stretch, I wanted to drink more water. This is just like a whole bunch of recipes. I've been adding to this all year. <laughs> There's a lot of Mediterranean diet in here because that's what works best for people with kidney stones. Uh, I wanted to wash my face every day. I wanted to prevent chewing and stopping picking. Okay, so let's, let's look at this and see exactly what happened. So healthy meals, fruit and vegetables. You know what? I did really well with this until August. I, there was like a period of time where I wasn't doing as well with it, but like from, uh, I wanna say March to August, I did super well and I was eating super healthy. And then I got a kidney stone and everything that I had planned throughout the window. Um, this is because when you get a kidney stone, there, there are like multiple things that can cause a kidney stone. I got mine tested, but my doctors kind of suck and told me to get it tested and then couldn't tell me what the test meant. And they were like, well, it's, it's anybody's guess, Google it. So there are a number of things that you have to keep track of. Um, drinking water, that's a fine thing. That Drinking more water is not gonna harm anything. But then there were things like limit your fiber and limit your protein. And any healthy diet that you go on consists of high fiber and high protein. So that really threw me for a loop and I got very discouraged and very upset and I just stopped caring. I had no professionals who could talk me through how to balance those things. I still don't really know how to balance it, but my concern for getting another kidney stone is a little bit lower. And I'm just going to try and up my water take to prevent that and I'm going to be putting more acid in my diet to help dissolve stones if they start forming. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with that. So let's say my, my struggles were consistency when problems arose. And initially after that kidney stone happened, like crap hit the fan and I got hit with a lot of stuff <laughs> in the next four months and I never got the chance to get back on the horse and so I just dropped it all together and I just stopped caring about what I was eating and um I was really good at exercising for a while I was going to the gym and then again crap hit the fan my consistency went out the window and I stopped doing those things okay finger <laughs> I have, a, anybody with anxiety or ADHD can attest to this, I have a really bad problem with picking at the skin around my finger and at my face too, but my fingers especially. I, just like everything else, I was doing so well at this and then crap hit the fan and I started being so stressed that I just, it looks better now, but initially I was missing like all of the skin on these fingers. It was all gone. So. That's just gonna go under our, when problems arose, I stopped being able to follow my habits. Um, stretching, I didn't do that. I think my issue with stretching is just, I would wait to do it until I was too tired. But I think 
I don't necessarily have to do stretching at night. I can do stretching anytime during the day. And that will bring us to our 2024 plan. I've divided, I've made this table and I've divided it into a couple of different things. The actual goal, so our goal is to stretch every day. Um, my body hurts all the time and I have inflammation everywhere, like on my breastbone, I have it in my joints. And if I don't stretch every day, I'm in a lot of pain and it super sucks. So I just stretch every day to keep things under control. So I'm not, you know, my, my knees aren't hurting the next day or my, my chest isn't hurting the next day. So one of the potential barriers is I'm too tired at night. I'm too tired to do that. Okay. And let's see, we have our counteractions here, things that can counteract the barrier. So you don't have to do it at night. I can probably do my stretching anytime. I can take a break in the middle of the day and I can, I can do it anytime. So we'll, we'll start with that and I'll add more to this in a second, but how often I want to do this one every day. And that's kind of what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna go through. So adding to our did well, my diet was very meticulous and pretty good for a hot minute. I was really good at eating food that I actually liked eating and still like balancing the nutrients that I needed. And I felt pretty good for a good couple of months. I did well. Um, showering regularly. Um, anybody with anxiety? Okay, this is gonna be a running pattern on a lot of the things that I'm trying to do. The big barriers are anxiety, depression, and ADHD. That's just, that's how it goes sometimes. And showering has been a huge struggle for me my entire life. But this year I showered regularly, even when I was like absolutely dying. I'm very proud of myself. I did that super well this year. Um, hair care. That's something I improved a lot on this year. I mean, you can't tell right now, my hair looks like trash right now, but I have been taking better care of my hair. So it looks better. It feels better. The eczema on my scalp is no longer because I have been very meticulous about how I wash and brush and treat my hair. I did very well with that. So let's check out our health. Um, I did pretty well getting vegetables in with every meal. Fruit, I didn't do as well. So fruit. Thing is with fruit is you can't just like mix it in with everything else. If you're eating mac and cheese for dinner, you can just throw vegetables in with that. Boom, good meal. Can't really throw strawberries in a pot of mac and cheese if you still wanna eat it at the end. <laughs> I need to find a better way to get fruit in my diet. Um, I did pretty well with that though. Okay, um, let's see. Healthy meals. I, I did moderately okay with this. I just kind of reverted to the same meals that I already make and know, and I don't think I had much of a problem with that. I was making the same like three meals, but I still enjoy them every time. Hmm. I might benefit from more variety in my diet. That might make it easier for me to be consistent. Because if I'm making something new, that might help. Water! More water! It is even more important now that I've got kidney stones. I, I actually recently found out I have another one sitting in my left kidney that nobody bothered to tell me about. All these people who looked at my x-rays knew it was there and saw it and didn't tell me even when I asked. It is so important that I drink a lot of water and I am considering maybe doing lemon water. The thing is with kidney stones, <laughs> um, high acid can help smooth out the stone. It's not gonna make it disappear for you but it smooths it out so when it passes, it passes easier and maybe isn't as painful and maybe lemon water is the way to do that. Maybe I just need to take shots of lemon juice. I don't know. Either way, I need more liquid in my diet. I really, really don't want another stone. Finger picking when stressed. I don't know why that's my stress response, but it is. 
<laughs> I just can't, I can't help myself when in times of trouble, the little goblin speaks to me, telling me to eat my fingers. So I, a lot of my struggles, it seems to be, are times of trouble. When I'm stressed out or when I've got something big going on, I tend to like revert to my raccoon trash self where I just don't take care of myself. I need to work on that. I need to figure out how I can keep up my good habits even when I am like really upset. And I was really pushed to my limits this year. <laughs> 2023 was absolutely the worst year of my entire life. It was terrible. So I need I need to know how to keep these things going. Let's see, washing my face. I did okay. Again, I dropped it when I when I was stressed out. Okay. I also have a beauty section because I am not very secure in myself. I don't always love the way I look in the mirror. So one of the things I wanted to work on this year was making, you know, being proud of who I who I looked like. Um, doing my nails. I, I did okay with this. My nails were done most of the time. But the barrier to that was that my nail polish that I had completely dried out and I didn't have very much nail polish to like, to begin with. So, I'm gonna just go ahead and straight put this in here. Uh, and I, I just want to like preface here, I do my own manicures. So potential barriers, nail polish, biting the dust. Hmm. So I don't want my gut reaction to just be buying more. I don't want to get into overconsumption and having that just be what I revert to, but I will, I think it might be a good idea to check for sales and be monitoring different stores and different online stores that might be having sales on their nail polish and maybe buying one every once in a while. I don't want to just, you know, have a mountain of nail polish right now. I don't have the space for that. One day, for sure, I would love to have the beautiful wall of nail polish that Simply Nail Logical has, but I don't have the space for that, and I don't have the need for it. So maybe I'll just look for sales, and when there's a sale, I'll consider buying a bottle or something like that. I also, I have some cheap press-ons that I bought, so maybe doing press-ons when I can't, when I can't paint. And that brings me to my next issue. The press-ons, <laughs> ruining my nails. Um, the press-ons have this really good glue on them, but when they come off, they take like a small layer of my nail off with it. And when I did those several weeks in a row, <laughs> my nails just became like paper thin and terrible. So the counteraction for that is to do press-ons less often. So there we go. Okay, let's see what else we have in our beauty. I have like a list of products that I might use here. Okay. Well, I got some hair clips. I've been working on my hair and like how to do my hair. And I think I did really well with that. I got a bunch of cheap little hair things and I spent some time learning how to curl my hair. I didn't know how to do that. Um, I have a whole Pinterest board of hairstyle things that I think I did pretty okay with. All right. So that was just going over like our general, this is what I had had planned. I don't believe there's anything else in here. I see that I started like some, <laughs> I, I started some like monthly things and then I just never finished them. So moving on to our 2024 plans. So we're gonna go ahead and do that weekly. Um, Showering regularly. I'm going to put that on my plan again. Because uh, that even though I'm doing that now, I know I'm like one bad week away from not doing it. <laughs> so potential barriers. Too tired. That's like the main issue. No motivation. So what I've done with this, this is, this is my tip for you, for any of you who struggle with doing things. 
I have a three, a three step system for taking bad tasks and making them doable. Um, you minimize multitask and you modify. So I've minimized the task of showering to make it so it takes the least amount of effort possible to do what I need to do in the shower. Everything I need in the shower is right in the shower or right next to it. So I don't have to go around my room gathering all my stuff and dealing with all that crap. No, everything is in there. Everything that I need is in there. And I have put like the least amount of steps between me and the shower as possible. Multitask. I got a little waterproof phone holder. I don't always need to use it, but there are some days when I really, really, really don't want to be in the shower to the point where I do need to put a video on my phone or something and listen to that while I'm showering. This is my reminder to you that whatever it takes to get you to do something is okay. Is it a little embarrassing that sometimes I need to watch TV to be in the shower? Yes. But did it get me to shower when I did not want to? Did it keep me sh safe in the shower when I did not feel safe? Yes, then that's all that matters. <laughs> all that matters is that it functioned well and it did what it wanted, no matter how embarrassing it is. And then the last one is to modify. Sometimes when I cannot do a full shower, I just wash my hair and I wash my body and that's it. I don't do shaving. I don't do like special rinses in my hair. I just need one and done and it's a five minute shower. That's better than nothing. So what I'm gonna write here is my counteractions for the barriers that I already have shorter showers, organizing the bathroom to make it easy. I got a shower caddy, which really helps because for some reason, when I drop a bottle on the shower, like it makes me un irrationally upset <laughs> and it makes me immediately want to get out. I don't know what it is about if, if it's the noise or if it's the disappointment of something sliding around, but it makes me so upset. So having that shower caddy <laughs> makes it so I also stay in the shower once I get in there. Hair care. Um, a lot of these potential barriers are going to be very similar. Too tired. No motivation. <laughs> That's something that keeps me from doing my hair. Easy go-to hairstyles will help with that. Things that I can do in like five minutes and be done. Um, something that really helped me with this was having curlers. I don't use them much anymore because I don't, I don't need them as much anymore. But if you're someone who struggles to do your hair in the morning and you've got maybe five minutes of energy in you and that's it, foam curlers or any other kind of curlers that you can put in your hair can be super, super helpful. It gives you a way to like have a hairstyle in the morning without having to sit there and curl each individual thing and it just takes less time. So. I want to do my hair every day, some level or another, even if it means just putting on a ponytail and like curling my bangs a little bit. Um, another thing is fruit intake. Actually, I'm not going to put that in all caps. That ruins the vibes. Fruit intake. The issue is fruit goes bad quickly. I'm not a canned fruit person, nor am I a frozen fruit person. I like my fruit to be fresh but it doesn't stay fresh. You've got two days to eat it. The, the big issue was money. I, would, I couldn't afford to buy multiple fruits to eat every single day. I couldn't afford to go to the store every day and buy fruit every day. So my fruit would go bad after a couple of days and then I just wouldn't have fruit until the next time I went to the store. So what can I do to fix that? There might be a way to store fruit so it lasts longer. That's something I'll have to research. A lot of these are saying that you can extend the shelf life of berries, which is uh, some fruit that I really enjoy, by washing them with vinegar and water. Does that actually work? So there are a couple of things you can do with storing your fruit. Okay, wash berries with vinegar and water. Store with paper towels. And you know what? It might just be time for me to graduate from my shopping twice a month to shopping once a week. At least, maybe I'll get like big ticket items twice a month 
but then things that only last a couple of days, maybe I'll start shopping once a week so they stay good. Uh, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have to see what my job situation is like. That is very much an if situation. With the money I was making as a TA, that would not have been possible, but that might be possible with a salary. We'll see. Okay. All right, moving on. Water intake. Um, not being thirsty. This is such like a juvenile. Like, I'm not thirsty. I don't want to drink right now. Um, and you know what? I bet moving more would help with that. <laughs> I think getting more exercise would help me feel more thirsty. I really don't know what else I can do. I, besides just pushing through it and chugging it anyways. Okay, what else do I want to do this year? Exercise. Exercise is something I have struggled with my entire life, mainly because I am too tired. I am tired all of the freaking time. I'm just, I'm just always tired and even thinking about exercising makes me tired. I am not good at keeping it consistent. This has been my biggest struggle out of anything else is exercising. I hate, I hate it. I hate every second of it. Even when I make it fun exercise, it's not fun. <laughs> I am tired. I hate it. If I could just sit on my butt all day, I would do it. I would do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look up some tips here. And I'm gonna look at Reddit tips specifically. I I wanna see what real people have to say about this because yeah, nationalhealth.org, they're probably gonna be super helpful, but they aren't gonna be the most useful because I mean, they're all gonna say the same things. Like build a support system, just do it. Just join a gym. Like that's not super helpful. I wanna hear what actually helps real people. So there are a couple of ways I could go about this. First, I need to make it easier to get movement. I think buying a gym membership would actually not make it easier. I just, for where I am right now, when I'm not doing it consistently, I don't want to be paying money for something that I'm not actually doing. I want to pay for a gym membership and then not use it. And from what I've heard, it can be a nightmare trying to cancel gym memberships. Um, for some people, investing money <laughs> will make them go more often because they're paying for it. That's not going to work for me. I know that's not going to work for me. So I need to make it easier to get the movement that I need in at home. So I have a couple of options here. Maybe I can get a treadmill. I think it might also be a good goal to get like 10,000 steps and maybe 20 to 30 minutes of movement. I think I need to have some flexibility in what exactly it is I'm doing every day instead of planning out like, well, today's leg day, today's arm day. I think I just need to work on being consistent first. And in the past when I've done that, when I've done today's leg day, today's arm day, and I skip a day, I just feel like I can't get back on track because I've, you know, I've messed up my whole week and I'm going to end up doing two leg days and no arm days because of the days that I missed. I think that is actually counterintuitive and not helping me. I need some flexibility in exercise options. And I want to do this every day, maybe, but I might start with like five, four or five days a week. Now, the worst of the bunch. <laughs> One of the worst of the bunch, teeth care. Anybody who has mental health issues will know caring for your teeth super super sucks i've done a lot better in the last few years than i have ever done but it still sucks and it comes down to the same things too tired no motivation i've already done my basic things of like i i've minimized the task so i keep i keep my teeth care within reach and easy to access I can access it from anywhere. I also have multiple um, floss picks. I have restringable floss picks because sticking my fingers in my mouth and doing this makes it 
so I don't floss. So I have these restringable ones. I'm not like throwing away those plastic bits every single freaking day and ruining the environment. I have multiple of those that I just keep everywhere in my apartment. So I'm always within reach of one and I always have like five minutes where I'm like, okay, I'm just watching TV. I might as well just, but what can I do to make it more consistent? I feel this is very juvenile, but if I chart my progress, this is, I remember this helped me as a kid. If I had like a little sticker or something or like some like bullet journal that I can fill in or something like that where I can chart how often I'm doing it, I feel like it might help me be motivated to do it more. And there are lots of easy ways I can do this. I can put this online. I can make like a little, like I can print out a little calendar. Whatever I end up doing, and this is my tip for you guys, if you want to chart something in some way or another, my recommendation is to always do it for free first. Don't spend $50 on a bullet journal and bullet journaling stuff if you've never done that and you expect that it's gonna change your life because it might not and you will have just wasted your money and it really feels terrible when you do that. So use what you've got first. I've got some sketchbooks, I've got notebooks, I've got um, my, my planner is actually completely full. I've got journals, I've got Notion where I can do to-do lists. I've got lots of options. So maybe I need to just figure out a way to chart my progress somehow. And this might be helpful for everything else. Maybe I have a little chart and every day I have to fill out, you know, did I do my stretching today? Did I uh, do my shower today? Did I do my hair care? Maybe that will help me feel better. Maybe I'll take a couple of pages in my sketchbook and I'll just make like a little calendar and I'll just chart things out there. I want to do this twice a day. I have some hobbies that I want to do more often. So I'm, I'm gonna actually make a separate list because I'm not exactly sure how I want this to play out. So we're gonna do a little heading here and we're gonna call this hobbies. Hobby or I guess just the goal in general. Like if I want to learn a certain piece, I'll put that in there. So writing, I want to get back into writing again. There, I think I can do a couple of goals here. I can do maybe like 400 words a day. I could maybe also do something like, um, maybe I wanna finish a manuscript by the, end of the, by the end of the year. That would be very, very ambitious. <laughs> Um, but I will put that in here as an option. YouTube. I want to post three times a week. And uh, right now I, I do struggle to do that. I think the main issue is that I'm actually, let's, let's put our, another section of barriers, barriers here. And we'll put our counteractions in here as well. So the barriers, not knowing what to film. This is a big issue. I'll get there and I'll be like, okay, it's Tuesday. I gotta film something to post on Saturday. What do I wanna do? And then I end up never doing it because I have to make a decision. I'm not good at making decisions. So if I plan videos a month in advance, and that offers me flexibility to switch things out if I want to, but I'm never sitting there going, okay, well, I know. Um, I would also, um, when I get behind one day, then I don't, like, I, I don't know what to do and I'm unable to, like, get back on the horse. So if I film a week in advance, so if I don't get to editing that day, I have, like, another day or two. It's not like I'm not going to be able to post the video the next day. I think filming things and then immediately turning them around and posting them, like, the next day is kind of working against me because then if I can't do things on that schedule and I get behind, I just don't ever do it. I did pretty good this year. I posted, how many videos did I post this year? I posted 93 videos, including, this one will be 94. Um, I'm filming this on December 30th. I could have posted other videos before I posted this, but right now I have 93 videos. Oh, I have 120 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, anyways, I, I did pretty well. But when things came up, um, when hard times happened, when I left for a trip or something, I just, I lost my consistency and then it took me a minute to get back in the groove. 
it also made it difficult for me to be able to film ahead for winter break, which I was planning on doing, but I just, I never got around to it because I film two days before I post. So I might rearrange my filming and editing schedule. And I might set a little subscriber goal for myself. So I, I gained 120 subscribers. <laughs> 120 subscribers in one year and I'm like so very grateful for that. I am surprised and shocked and just delighted that there are 120 of you who are like vaguely interested in what I'm doing. So maybe I'll set a subscriber goal of maybe 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, and I may adjust that as time, as time passes and as this year goes great or goes horribly we'll see i may adjust that but that's like a a tentative goal um let's see painting painting and drawing i want to spend some time doing this a couple of times a week I think that's a pretty realistic goal for me right now. Doing it every day just isn't possible. I think I'd be packing my days <laughs> way too much. So maybe a couple of days a week, um, maybe on a Saturday, I'll spend a couple of hours just painting or doing my thing. I think the barriers there would be time. So I would schedule time, not every day, and that would help. Um, and I'll, I'll fill in the barriers for writing in a second. Now, this is the most painful part because it's like moderately embarrassing, but I have to face it. My small business kind of flopped and failed this year because I was not very prepared and I let just the stress of my personal life get the better of me and you know what? When it comes down to it, I made some choices this year where to spend my time. And I spent my time with family in times of need where it like really mattered. And I would do that a million times over again. I don't really regret dropping my school and my hobbies to be with my family when we needed to be together. I don't regret that. And going forward, I would like to run my business in a way where I can accommodate things like that and not completely lose control of my business. There should be room for both in my life. And I, I, I know I can manage it better where I can still be with my family and um, be able to run my business. So I would like to I don't know if there's like a necessary like a sale goal I want to make, but I want to run it successfully for one year and see what happens. And maybe by the end of the year, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. It served its purpose. It was fun, but I don't want to do it anymore. So what this is going to mean, how I want to run it successfully, I want to have products for for main holidays. I want to release them well in advance. I want to promote my business and and I want to be able to talk about it. I want to be consistent in the products that I'm putting out. Um because it's not like I'm having products that are like really terrible, but when I'm cutting the sticker, sometimes I'm not consistent in how I cut. So I think what's going to get that to happen is practice and releasing more. I don't, I did not release enough. I only had a couple of things and I, I did not promote my business either. I didn't promote it on this channel. I didn't promote it on my social medias. I didn't te I texted my family, like my immediate family, but I didn't text anybody else. I didn't tell anybody else. I need to not do that. I need to be better about promoting. I need to not be embarrassed about what I'm doing. That's the problem is I'm embarrassed and it's not a perfect, I'm selling cards and stickers and they are not perfect products, but it is my first business ever. I like 
nobody releases a perfect product on the first try. I, I, I think I need to stop being embarrassed that it's not perfect and I need to work on making it better so I, I feel better. So right now, one of the changes I just barely made was I upped the quality of the cardstock that I printed the cards on. It's not a huge difference to everybody else, but to me, it makes me feel like my quality is a little bit better. And the barriers there are just time, motivation. And what I need to do, I need to have set aside time to work on business planning. And I need to just get over, I need to get over it. I need to get over the embarrassment of not running a small business perfectly after having it open for two months. All right. And I might do short form content. So this is like TikTok reels. Um, consistent posting. The barrier to this was that I was running out of time and I was running out of ideas. I started a couple of series that I really liked, but then by the end, I just was like not inspired by them anymore because I was doing them so freaking often. Um, the Barbie makeup series in particular, I really liked that one for the first like 15 episodes or so, but after a while, the makeup looks started to look kind of the same because the character design and the Barbie dresses aren't really all that different. <laughs> They're all the same variations of like some kind of pink. So I think what would help with this is posting once a week. I need to post once a week instead of twice. That's gonna help with how much time I spend filming TikToks every week. It's also gonna help my creativity be consistent so I'm not like getting to the end of the week and being like, I have no inspiration to do absolutely anything. And I already filmed one TikTok this week. So I'm gonna also need to sit down and brainstorm some longer term ideas. Not something that I just have a couple of ideas for and then by episode five, I've run out of ideas. And I, if, if you've checked out my TikTok, you'll also see that I, I started at 25 days of baking and I only got to like day three. That was not an issue of time nor creativity. I had that all planned out. I had like all 25 days planned out. What happened there was a family emergency. And that's again, one of those things where, you know, I'm sad that I didn't finish it, but I really don't regret giving that up to be with my family. So the way I can balance that is film, ahead of time maybe one or two weeks so when stuff happens i can still be consistent especially if it's a longer form series where i'm doing something every day like um the the baking if i had been filming that months in advance I could have still posted those videos while i was going on but because i was baking one day before i needed to post the video I, I lost it. I couldn't be consistent. I, I, I had no room to move around my life in order to accommodate what was going on. So I had to drop something and that ended up being that. And I would do it a million times over. But I would like to adjust things so that doesn't happen. For my YouTube, I also need to brainstorm video ideas. I need to have a bigger list that I can pull from. I have like a small, I'll, even, I'll show you. So here's my content calendar. I think this is too full. This is too much. Um, I have like some random videos in here. It's not very organized and um, it's, it's, it's just kind of all over the place. I'd like to streamline that and make it easier for me to access and read and make it easier to pull ideas from. And I, I think that would come with planning. Here's what we got. I, I may add a couple of other things in here, like journaling. That's something I don't do. <laughs> there are other things that I want to work on, other goals that I want I want to like have a, a proper PC set up this year. I don't know, there, there are new things that I want to learn this year, but this is where I'm going to start. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to film my progress for the entire next year. 
there are there's a lot here and I would like to take you along so you can see what exactly it is I'm doing and this is all going to be posted everything that I'm going to film is going to be posted December of 2024. This video will be posted early January but everything I film the progress that's going to be an end of the year video. I think it'll help keep me in check too to have something that's like keeping me What's the word I'm looking for? Held accountable, keeping me accountable. I'm gonna take each of these goals one or two at a time. I, If I try and do it all at once, I'm gonna crash and burn and hate myself and then just live off of hot Cheetos for the rest of the year, just so I can get into the habit of it and then I will add something else. I think that will help. It'll help me feel less overwhelmed because I have an entire year to do these things. I don't have to get it all done by January 1st. I have an entire year. See you guys in uh, December of next year for our, our check-in on what exactly I did. Hey guys, super quick update. So while I was at home, I was playing a lot of Sims and while I was playing, I found myself sitting there thinking, why is it that I can spend hours at a time you know, grinding through the game and getting everybody to level 10 of their careers and level 10 of all of their, their skills. Why can I do that, but not like exercise every day? Why is it that I can do that and like raise their fitness level, but I can't raise my fitness level. I can't do it. And I realized in the Sims, you get like, you get rewards, essentially rewards for leveling up each, um, each level you can see your progress you can see what level you are what number you are and as you level up you get a couple of satisfaction points and as you get higher and higher it's not necessarily your goal starts out of like i'm gonna be level 10 of the fitness skill you know that'll be great you just work your way up and you get better and better and it's more about consistent progress and not just like reaching a goal post so i spent some time at home just kind of thinking how i might transfer that to my own life and I came up with this so what we got here I decided to do like a gaming my system type of thing I have I wrote down a whole bunch of tasks things that I want to do every day things that I just want to do sometimes and I gave them all a point value and a lot of these align with some actual goals that I made reading more writing more um, and then I made this nifty little tracker and what I, I have all my tasks sorted by occurrence and then I have my milestones down here. So I'm getting some level of reward for like being consistent because that is what I struggled with was being consistent. So I have them all set here and I will check them off as I do them. So this is from yesterday. I haven't done my checks for today. So I'll check them off. And then I have each of these little pages up here that are um, divided and sorted and filtered by what the occurrence is. So for my daily tasks, I've done my manicure this week. I did my nails, so I have that checked. And at the end of the week, I will put the sum in my tracker here. So yesterday, all of the things that I checked off are all right here. And I have this um, sum down here that will automatically tally up everything that I've done. So I've, I got 13 points today or yesterday. So is it really, it's the 18th. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> So you can see I'm tracking them day by day. Yesterday I earned 13 points and I reached, oh, I reached day 10 of skincare. So I got a milestone point there. So you can see it's adding up all the points I earned. I've earned 85 points so far. I have a couple of days that I haven't put in here yet because I was tracking them in my journal before I started tracking them here. So I need to write that in, but I've done my milestone, I've done a milestone. So I'm gonna go down to our milestone tasks. I've done 10 days of my skincare routine. So I've got five milestone points. Anyways, so far it seems to be working okay. And it seems to be like kind of enjoyable. It is giving me good feelings to like check things off when I've done them. And it feels good to see points adding up and it makes me feel like I'm doing something and then at the, at the end or throughout time I've got a couple of I don't know how that got messed up here I have some rewards here that I can use those points to buy and some of them have a prerequisite to them 
So a treadmill is something that I have considered getting, but I don't want to buy that until I'm like consistently exercising. Because if I'm not consistently exercising, I'm not going to just start being consistent because I have a treadmill. I want to know for sure that it is an investment that's worth it. And I have also, I have the same feelings for skincare. There are some skincare products that I want to try, but I'm not going to buy them if I'm not going to use them. I want to be consistently doing that. So once I reach 30 days in a row, then I can spend whatever points I decide. And when I reach 40 minutes of exercising every day, I'm just working my way up. Then I can spend the, the points to get the treadmill. So, and I just have little, I wanted to make them things that were fun and things that were not necessities. I'm not, and things that would like genuinely make my life really miserable if I didn't have. I'm not going to make myself earn, you know, things like being able to relax or seeing my family or even like watching TV at the end of the day. I'm not going to make myself earn that. The goal is not to make myself miserable if I fail, but to encourage myself to do better. So I want to do better. So anyways, that's what I've got going on. And now back to Arthur. I hope you guys had a great winter break. I hope you had a great holiday season and happy new year. And um, I will catch you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this and I love you very much. Remember you've got this, you are capable, you are strong, you are smart, you are amazing and you can get through this. I'll catch you guys next time.